people years ago always said that her mom was kind of a whore. So she was a strong It's not here this morning. Yeah. And Sister uh, Mary Love. The Cook family, remember them. Uh, I don't know if y'all know, but we call him Teddy Cook, Ted Cook, but it's, we call him Teddy. He mm-hmm. passed away. He had uh, cancer in his spine. He's too late in for a while. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
We have a friend that, well, he lives in Franklin, I think. I mean, I did, but he's pretty bad health. Yeah. Make a prayer for him. And also, I have two nieces that come home for the weekend, come visit for the weekend. They're going back to the harbor for a Thursday. All right. They in the road. And for safety. Uh, also, Sister Guthrie will be going to Missouri, uh, Arkansas, Missouri, uh, this Arkansas. week. Uh, it's it's Arkansas Missouri state line. So. <laughs> she'll, probably, she'll probably be in Missouri, Arkansas too. So, <laughs> but anyway, we just pray the Lord will give her. A, I'm not going to go, but uh, she's going up there. So, uh, the Lord will keep His hand up, uh, safety while she travels too. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, uh, Miss Shelton. Uh, friends that uh, we know uh, uh, is uh, she lost her husband here uh, it's been a few months back last year and she's on oxygen now uh, 20, 24 hours 24 7 she's on oxygen and uh, oh, uh, also she's got, a, she's got an aneurysm somewhere in her stomach and she's uh, losing blood so they're uh, going to go in and see if they can't Cateterize, or however you say that, uh, and then stop that, stop the flow of, of that blood. She's losing blood, so we, why I told her we would ask or pray for her today. A lot of needs. There's there's a lot of needs. Amen. And I know we all have unspoken requests. If you would, let's all stand and, and uh, we'll just take these needs to the Lord in prayer today. Father, we're so thankful that we can come to you, Lord, today on the behalf of these. Uh, today that stands, Lord, in the need of prayer, and so many, Lord, that are uh, sick, uh, that's afflicted, Lord, we know that you're able, Lord, to reach down with a hand of healing, Lord, into their hearts and lives today. We ask that you would uh, uh, reach down, Lord, with a hand of comfort and peace, Lord, to these that has lost their loved ones. We pray that you would just be a comfort unto them, Lord, in this, in this time of sorrow, Lord, that you would uh, just wrap your arms around them. Lord, uh, let there be a, a comfort there. Keep your hand upon these, Lord, that are, are traveling. We pray, Lord, for traveling safety and mercy, Lord, as they, uh, they go, Lord, to uh, their respectful abodes uh, or visits. And, Lord, to, we ask that you would just be those that's not with us today, Lord. We ask that you would bless those today. We ask that you would uh, bless Lord, each and every one, Lord, today, every need, Lord, today, God, we know that you, uh, in your word, you tell us, Lord, to cast our cares upon you, Lord, and that's what we're doing today, Lord, you're the healer, you can do the miraculous, Lord, God, and we just, we thank you, Lord, for that today, thank you for the hope that we have, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray today, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Amen. Let's just give him some love this morning, some praise today. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all our praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Just let your will be done here today, Lord, in your precious name. Thank you. 
goodness is so good. It's so great.
baptized in Jesus' name, and God filled you with the Holy Ghost. Yes. yes. You know what that song says? It makes me love everybody. Yes. Talking about somebody got the Holy Ghost the other night at church. Said that young man running around that church, big church, hugged everybody's neck yes. in the church. Yes. Anyone that let him, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. It just makes you love everybody. Thank you, God. Told me to 
come down to this old shop Monday morning at about 7 o'clock. They find something for us to do. I'm thankful to God is keeping, us, keeping me in some kind of income coming in. He's got a child on me working. But I'm thankful for all God's many blessings. He's so good to us. Amen. Thankful for another chance to be back in this house. Yes, that's true. Amen. Living below in this old sinful world, all hardly a comfort can afford. Won't drive me along to face me. Sister Joy Hicks, they'd sing the verses to it. Yeah. But I'll sing that chorus. I got another song I want to 
the same way I want to sing that little chorus real quick. Yeah. Well, I'm all wrapped up, tied up. I'm tangled all up in Jesus. I'm wrapped up, tied up, tangled all up in God. I'm wrapped up, I'm tied up.
and, and let it be multiplied, and we'll give you the praise and glory for it. In the precious name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give unto the Lord today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace that I have. The world didn't give it to me. No, the world didn't give it to me. Spotted from the world. Hallelujah. We're not part of this world. We're not part of this kingdom. Hallelujah. We're part of the kingdom of God. And I don't want nothing to do with the world. Hallelujah. Oh, the devil likes to make us think we have to have something to do with it. Praise God. Hallelujah. I thank God he's got a much, much better way. Hallelujah. So in the book of James, chapter 1, Verse 27, very familiar scripture, I'm sure. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. And you can be seated. Pure religion. Hallelujah. Sum it up. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hallelujah. If you really love God, hallelujah. If you really love your neighbor, hallelujah. That's that's true religion. I know there's a lot of people out there that do good deeds like Brother Guthrie already mentioned this morning, but I'm going to tell you, that's how Cornelius got God's attention. Because he was a good man. He was a man that tried to help others. That's right. He was a man that tried to live by the principles of, of righteousness. Hallelujah. And that gets God's attention. Praise God. But uh, <clears throat> the next part is to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. And that word unspotted in the Greek dictionary translates unblemished physically and morally. We've got to keep our body unspotted from the world and we've got to keep our morals and our way of thinking unspotted from the world. Mentally and physically, hallelujah. Morally and physically, hallelujah. Now physically, in the book of Leviticus, 
19 and 28, it says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. But God doesn't want us doing anything to our body. I know the custom of the heathen back then, they get so grieved and they cut themselves and make it, you know, oh, they're really sorrowful for the loss of their loved ones. Oh, I'm glad we don't do that today. Right. Hallelujah. But he doesn't want us to make any marks in our flesh. I know Brother Henson, he used to get on to us if we even wrote on our arms or hands or something with ink, ink pen or we got them little wet stick tattoos that wash off that even when you take a bath. You know, it says, make no marks on your flesh. Hallelujah. What do you want a tattoo for? It looks like somebody else in the world. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a strange thing what goes through our minds sometimes in the subtle ways that the devil tries to influence us. Hallelujah. But we're not to do anything to defile this body. Whether it's externally, you know, tattoos or cuttings or piercings or anything like that. Hallelujah. Or, hallelujah, or morally giving in to the things of this world. Hallelujah. You know, tell a little story this morning. John Savage, a friend of mine in Florida, hallelujah, he joined the army. Some of you probably heard this before, but Oh, John, they got off on leave, and then we guys decided to go to the ocean. They went down to the beach and have them a party, and John got too drunk, and he passed out on the beach. Wearing nothing but a pair of shorts. He got blistered so bad he got sun poisoning. And they had to carry him to the military hospital, and they took care of him there, and he got over that. And when he got out, the military police were waiting for him. He's like, what's going on? He said, you're under arrest. What for? And they give him his papers. And, and uh, he was being arrested for destruction of government property. He said, I realized right then, when I signed that dotted line, they owned me. I was their property to do with as they please. And I'm telling you tonight, when you got your name on the roll, you became God's property. Hallelujah. This body is not your own. It's the temple of the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 13, 16, and 17 tells us, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So that's why we're not supposed to do anything to defile our flesh, defile ourselves morally or out externally, hallelujah, physically, Hallelujah. We belong to God. That's right. And as long as we got the Holy Ghost dwelling in us, you know, we're God's property. That's right. Hallelujah. And I don't want to do anything to grieve the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Morally, you know, our moral judgment has got to come from God's word. You can't go by the things of this world. And I've said before, and I've talked about television and and, you know, how it was preached against, still is, you know, in some ways. But to the point, you know, when I first got in church, they didn't have the cell phones and things like that back then. But I remember going by some of these stores in the mall and I'd, something flashed and I'd look at, oh, Lord, forgive me for looking at that television, you know. That was the mentality that I had. And, uh, and then people started coming out with these video cameras and, Oh, you can't look at that. That's a motion picture. You know, it's a moving picture. And, uh, you know, there was kind of turmoil about some of that stuff. And I remember going to Brother Cottrell because at work that we were required to watch a safety video, answer a quiz on what we saw, and then sign our names that we watched this. You know, and our job depended on it. And I asked Brother Cottrell what to do about it. He said, well, brother, in a situation like that, I just go in and go along. It's not like you just go and watch the TV. And, and, you know, and then later on, you know, you know, there was a lot of controversy over videos and, and videoing things in church. And, and I understand that a lot of these things were just kind of stepping stones for the devil to get this drop, you know. And that, that's why I'm, I'm preaching against Hollywood. Yeah. Lot, some people may not realize it, but through Hollywood, 
a lot of our enemies in other parts of the world were trying to destroy our country by devaluing America. Try to try to destroy. They said if they could destroy the traditional family in America, we could take them. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of us like children of Israel. You know, Balaam told the lack, said, "Man, if you can get them to start mingling with, you know, your women and them and their are their you and their women and and all this kind of stuff and breaking the laws of God, God will no longer be with them, and you can take them." Well, that's basically what they're doing to us, trying to do to us. But now. What you see on, on television and everything about Hollywood, hallelujah, is trying to devalue our country. You say, oh, there's some good stuff on there. It might be, but there's also some bad stuff on it. Yeah. When you read the book of Romans, uh, chapter 1, just the last five or six verses, and tell me what you could watch on the television that doesn't contain some of that. It's worldliness. And they that do such things that say they're worthy of death, not only they, but those that take pleasure in those that do those things. Are we not doing it for pleasure if we're doing it? Hallelujah. we got to be careful of some of these things. So, you know, when in a day and time where there's television right there, you know, i got videos on there of grandkids, different stuff, and church services, and Different things, you know. But uh, we've got to watch what is affecting our mentality. What's affecting our morals. I know people listen to music. Some talk about worldly music. And I'm just rambling here a little bit, but I'm trying to get the point across. You, know, you ever notice listening to music that there's spirits behind the music? You know, they call love songs love songs because it affects your emotion of love. They got songs that you can listen to that make you want to go fight, you know. There's a freedom music and different things like that that affect your mood. Hallelujah. And if you're not careful when you watch things, you'll find yourself reacting the same way those characters react to certain situations. And that's definitely, probably 99% of the time, not what God would want in His Word. Come on. Somebody does you wrong. You want to get even? Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. Well, what am I supposed to do, Lord? Take the low road. Pray. Hallelujah. I used to be bad get even. And pretty creative with it. Hallelujah. Hey, bro. While you're there, I'm sorry to interrupt. But Go ahead. I, I took a load of wood to a man up in the north end of the county couple years ago and he said oh he paid me for a little bit he said just go ahead and bring me a whole cord and he said just tell me how much and I'll send you the money well <laughs> I ain't never got the money but the other day I was passing by and he's got a locked gate there yeah this I mean this is how the devil I mean you know he, he said why don't you just wheel in there and hook a chain to that gate and just pull it down and leave? <laughs> I, mean, that's not, that's not I, mean, that, I mean, that's the way the devil yeah. does. I, that's I mean, the way he does. We have to really guard ourselves, yeah. you know. <laughs> I, I just kind of chuckled. I said, no, not today, devil. I just yeah. go on. <laughs> if, you take, if you keep track of it, you'll find out any time you go through something like that, God blesses you in another way. Hallelujah. He'll, he'll bless you for obeying his word. Sorry to get you off. Your that's all right, though. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. I've been guilty of that. Probably all of us have had the devil put stuff in our mind like that. Ways to get even with people. But that's not God's will. That's right, bro. But our moral judgment needs to come from God's word. It's not always what the flesh wants, but it's what the spirit wants to follow. I asked a question this morning. Where is your heart? Is it leaning toward the world or is it leaning toward the church? You know, John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. This is all part of, you know, defiling our temple. Are your desires, are your passions toward the things of this world? Or are they toward the things of God? Because if your love, if your desires are to be like the world, and 
have the same lifestyle and things like the world. Hallelujah. The love of God's not in you. Hallelujah. One place the Bible tells us that you're, you're a liar. Say you got the love of God. Verse 16 said, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. That's not what motivates us as children of God. We aren't lusting after things. I understand sometimes we like to have better things. We pray and ask God, Lord, I'd like to have a nicer house or a nicer car. But if that's what we're striving after, if that's what our main purpose is, our main goal, something's not right. That's a worldly spirit. Verse 17 said, And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, what do you got now? But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What would you give in exchange for your soul? If you could gain the whole world, what good would it do you? Hallelujah. You know, if you can see, really, and we get glimpses of it reading the Word of God, but if you really, really had a full picture of what God's got for us when this is all over, you wouldn't, even, you wouldn't even think, of, well, that's trash. I don't want nothing to do with that, you know. Hallelujah. Praise God. Someone says, why can't we straddle the fence? What's wrong with sitting around the fence and enjoying what we can in the world, enjoying what we can in the church? Well, why, why can't we straddle it? Well, Romans 8 and 7 says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. It says, extreme hatred. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us to be carnally minded. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So as long as we're being carnally minded, you're not subject to the will of God. We have to overcome this flesh. All right? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. It, that world, word flesh also translates into worldly. Those that are worldly cannot please God. And I wonder sometimes, you know, you, you go, <clears throat> a lot of churches and, and, and all the all men folk not talk about the sports. Baseball teams, basketball teams, football teams, some of them even golf and other stuff like that. And they keep up with all that stuff, and that's what's on their mind. And I understand, you know, some of us like to go hunting and fishing and things like that. And we talk about that kind of stuff too. But, man, when we start trying to pattern after the things of the world, I'll tell you, hunting and fishing, you know, that can get the spirit behind it too. You get some of these professional fishermen, and, you know, people want to watch all that stuff and keep up with who's who and what's what. Now, you can get in the wrong spirit there too. Well, I've always liked to hunt fish ever since I was a little kid, you know. I look at it like, you know, the old days when you used to live off the land. I'm going to tell you, so things keep going like they are, you might wind up needing the skill to be able to feed yourself yeah. off the land. You know, I always like being able to identify natural foods, plants, roots, different types of fruit different things you can do for, you know, natural remedies and things like that. Hallelujah. There's some things we might wind up needing one of these days. I don't know. Don't Praise God. Know. This whole world's getting to be a rough place. You know, I, I hear things like, you know, California won't let you plant any heirloom seeds. Nothing that can reproduce of itself. <coughs> if you can take the seeds from the plant and plant more plants, they won't allow you to do that. Why, why do they want to do stuff like that? You know, if you can't make your own food, then you're dependent on the government. I mean, we need to be careful on some things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But you can't serve God, man. There's no way it's going to work. You can't be part of this world. Hallelujah. And the church at the same time. What is man? That word translates wealth personified. Well, who do you think that is? That's the devil. The God of this world. This whole system is set up with a love of money. I know the Bible says that the love of money is the root of all evil. 
and so on and so forth. You can't have it. I don't want nothing to do with money. Well, the Bible also says that money answereth all things. So what's it saying? Is it contradicted? No, it's saying when you have a love for money, when that's what you desire, when that's what you strive after, if that's what is most important to you, it's the root of all evil. But the money answereth all things means that a means of trade is how you manage to get the things you need. It's not a contradiction in the Word of God. Hallelujah. Whether you're trading something for good or work for food or, or whatever, hallelujah, the way things used to be, you know, back in the early history of man. You know, James 4 and 4 says, Ye adulterers and adulteresses, Know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God? That's a strong hatred with God. Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. That's strong words. Why would God consider you an enemy if you're straddling defense? You're either in or out. You're either for us or against us. Hallelujah. You can't do both. A knight can't be serving his king and serving the king of the enemy at the same time. It don't work that way. Hallelujah. I don't want to be the enemy of God. Verse 5 says, Do you think that the scripture saith in vain that the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy? That's why the apostle Paul said he had to keep on top of his body. He had to bring it into subjection. Things like I had to, he had to die daily. Hallelujah. We, it's a constant battle. Hallelujah. So how can we overcome this spirit of worldliness? Well, in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. If you're serving God with your whole heart, you're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one to the other. They're direct opposites. It's like sticking the opposite ends of a magnet together. It don't work. Hallelujah. And these are contrary to one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. And whether you're on the worldly side, you can't do the things of the Spirit because you're caught up in that. And if you're on the spiritual side, you can't do the things of the world because it's not part of the church. It's not part of God's kingdom. Hallelujah. It lets us know that it's one way or the other. There's not no fuzzy medium or no happy in between. Verse 18 says, But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. And if I went through definitions of all of these, I'd be here all morning. But, you know, most of us who are grown know what these things mean. Are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You know, the book of Romans went a little bit further and said, not only they that do these things, but those that take pleasure in them. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. We don't want nothing to do with this in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But the fruit of the Spirit, this is what we're supposed to portray, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh. It could also be translated worldliness with the affections and lusts. I came out of the world. I don't want to keep striving to be like the world. It's a constant battle, especially when you first get to church. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. In other words, trying to keep up with the world or worldliness. Hallelujah. We need to provoke each other up to love on the good spiritual things. We cannot allow a love for the world, a love of the world, 
to replace the love of God. That's right. That's right. Bro. Hallelujah. The world don't understand that, but we have to have a love of God. You know, there's a spirit that constantly tries to make us feel like we are missing out on things of this world. You know, I, I use Christmas for an example because I see a lot of controversy going on about this. I, I don't celebrate Christmas. You know, I'm not like some people. Hey, you gave somebody a gift, you're going to hell. I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't go there. Uh, but I don't celebrate Christmas. And if you send me a Christmas card, thank you, but I don't send Christmas cards out. I don't like the symbolisms on them, some of the things that are on them. Hallelujah. Can be good, can be bad. Hallelujah. I don't, I don't, or I discourage putting up trees in your home because it's nothing but an idol. The book of Isaiah tells us not to follow after the way of the heathen. You know, they go into the woods, they cut down a tree with an axe, they bring it home, they fasten it to the floor they, with nails, they deck it with silver and gold, you know, and it's an idol. And if you look in the older dictionaries, I have one that told us that uh, St. So-and-so from the Catholic Church years ago converting the Druids who used to do this, this pagan tradition was cutting down an oak tree and they fastened it in their home and they decked it with silver and gold. And he carried the druids out with an axe and, and cut down an oak tree to show them that their God had no power over our God. And then he showed them the fir tree and said, this is the tree of the Christ child. I don't know where the Catholic Church got that. And told them they could continue doing it with the tree. And that's where the Christmas tree comes from. You know? So I don't want no Christmas trees in my home. You know, It's an idol. I don't want that in my home any more than I want someone to come over and paint a satanic pentagram on my wall. I don't want that in my house. You know, there's a, a, a knife and spoon, no, it's a fork and a spoon set. It was a knife, I'm trying to remember. But it's, a, it's an article in devil worship. Now you might see some copies of it that just look like a, a big metal spoon and a big metal fork. That's, you know, that's one thing. But I had one in a house I moved into one time and it was, it was, it, when I got looking at it, I realized this thing had demonic faces all over it. And the little hole in the top where you fasten that thing to the wall, hung on a nail, it was actually the mouth of a demon. So I got looking up that stuff, and man, we were having trouble with bad spirits in the house, you know. I finally got rid of that thing. Threw it out on a porch. Next day, I carried it to the dumpster, and I come back home that night. We prayed, and man, you could feel the clean spirit in the house. And the next morning, I got ready to go to work, and I walked out on a porch, and I felt that, that same spirit hit me again. And I'm like, what in the world is wrong here? You know, I got rid of that thing. And I looked over there on the porch behind the garbage can. That head of that demon had rolled off back there behind that. You might think I'm crazy, but I picked that thing off. I said, you devil. And I pitched that thing off the porch as far as I could out over Bill Starbucks' garden. Yeah. And landed right in his potato patch. And then later that year, he said, man, I don't understand what happened, man. I had the prettiest potato vines you could, you could ask for. There's not a potato one underneath any of them. I thought, Lord, am I responsible for that? <laughs> You know, kind of like the pigs. <laughs> they got possessed with the devil. They run off in the sea, and Tatus says, I ain't growing giving you a place to live. I don't know. But, you know, you got to be careful what things you bring into your house. If it belongs to the devil, you're giving him a place in your home. You know, I've heard people preach against owls. You know, I don't know why I'm getting off on this, but, you know, it's not just owls. You know, some people at Iron Hill one time, Brother Gill was preaching about, about owls and you know, people started getting any little owl pig, picture and figurine and stuff, throwing them away. And, and, uh, I'm like, man, in case some of you don't know, the Lord was referred to as the owl of the desert. You know, but there's there's a certain article you can buy, man, some of these hobby shops and things like that, that is a direct article of satanic worship. And there's a statue of a great horned owl, and it's got a place in the belly for a candle. And the devil worshippers would set that thing up in a room and light that candle in a dark room and that thing of the owl cast the shadow of a devil on the wall with horns. And they used that devil worship. Well, if I got one of them, I'm throwing it out. I don't want that in my home, okay? So, But I don't get caught up in all this stuff about, you know, you know, 
devil trying to tell you people, you're depriving your kids, they're not getting Christmas presents and all this, you know, just, you're not letting them watch TV, just all the things of the world, that, you know, they just, it's a spirit that tries to make you feel like you're missing out on stuff. I'm missing out on nothing. When this thing winds up and we all go to heaven that are living for God like we should, we'll see who's missing out. I thank you, Lord. But I can track, man. I see preachers that say, oh, man, you know, you da, 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 you buy a Christmas present. You know, if you want to buy a present, give it to somebody. I ain't no problem with that. You got to be careful how far you go because you can take anything, 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 and you can trace it back to paganism. Or even birthday presents. To give you kids. I, you know, I had to kind of struggle with that and sort some of these things out because you're taking up money for a Christmas present for your boss and aren't giving in on that. You know, I, I wound up chipping in. I wound up realizing that the people out there in the world, they really believe that's Jesus' birthday. <laughs> They've been taught that all their life. So until I get them full of the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to worry about all this other stuff <laughs> about Christmas and hair and pants and ties and all kinds of other things that people might ask you about. Praise God. I, don't, I want to try to do what I can to get these people's confidence and let them realize I care about them. Praise God. But I've seen preachers that say, well, you know, I don't give no presents on Christmas. Yeah, but you sure do take advantage of thanksness. <laughs> on Thanksgiving, you go buying all kinds of presents just to avoid doing it on the day. You know, some of that stuff can just get crazy. I'll be honest. But I don't need no idols in my home. Amen. And I'm not going to get carried away with nothing besides that. Long before I ever got to church, my family got to the point that they were tired of making merchants rich. So that's all a lot of these holidays are, are about. Making somebody rich. Make you feel guilty. Oh, you need to get everybody a present, you know. Yeah, right. Make you rich. We'd get together as a family, have a meal together, but we didn't get carried away by a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But anyway, let me get back to where I was. I think I was, yeah, spirit. Always trying, the devil's always trying to do something, trying to lead us in there. You know, certain holidays, worldly entertainments, you know, the devil wants to make you feel like you're missing out. I'm interested in St. Patrick's Day. I'm not Easter interested in the Easter Bunny. Hallelujah. Definitely not interested in Halloween. For sure. Hallelujah. For sure. They're just another day of the year for me. Praise God. First John 2.15. Love not the world, do the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So how can I live in the world and not be part of it? Well, let me tell you what's wrong with our understanding of worldliness. You know, we look at worldliness as individual items instead of as a whole picture. You know, we need to look at living for God as a whole picture. You know, it's not bits and pieces, pick and choose. Hallelujah. We're part of the kingdom. And whatever is part of that kingdom, we need to be part of. Uh, but worldliness. When they come and ask the pastor, well, is it all right to go here? Is it all right to go there? You know, Brother Cockley used to say, I ain't never been there. Go. And if the Holy Ghost convicts you, don't ever go again. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the reason people want to look at worldliness as individual items is because they're wanting to partake in some of it. You know? Okay, this part isn't too bad, but this part is. I'll leave that alone, but I can do this. And you wind up really straddling the fence of what it winds up being. You know, you leave part of it alone because it's worldliness is bad. And then you take on part of it because this worldliness is not quite so bad. There's no fuzzy in between, church. 
Hallelujah. I don't want that spirit getting a hold of me. Hallelujah. It's not individual items. It's worldliness as a whole. You know, people will say, well, you know, I don't watch these Hollywood movies because that's bad, but I'll watch the news. You know, everything about television, everything that's on it, is promoting worldliness. Whether it may not sound that bad at the time, or, you know, it sounds good or sounds bad all together, it's all part of worldliness. And unless you look at it as a whole picture, you don't realize I need to just stay away from all of it. I don't need to be part of that. My mind shouldn't be entertained by things like that. Hallelujah. is a spirit that does everything it can to overthrow holiness. Your battle living for God is a whole lot easier if you just leave all that stuff that pertains to worldliness alone. Sister Daniel used to say, if you live for God hard, it'll be easy. But if you live for God easy, it's going to be hard. It's going to be a constant battle. You know, there are tares of the world among the weak. There's nothing we can do about that. Even in church, there's going to be situations like that. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 5 and 10 said, Yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world, or with covetous, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for then must he needs go out of the world. If you're going to avoid these altogether, you're just going to have to die. But now I have written unto you not to keep company, if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such a one, know not to eat. Hallelujah. They call him a brother and he's not living right. That doesn't need to be your, your number one companionship. I'll put it that way. There are problems with having tears among we. Hallelujah. I remember seeing people get in church and get Holy Ghost and, and I think, Lord, don't let them strike up a friendship with that one because it's gone. Yeah. And, uh, I'd rather see someone get into church where there's a good conservative church and they've got conservative principles and, and they might come down a little bit, but when you start hanging around with the wrong people right off, it seems like people that come out of the world will tend to want to follow after the worldliest people in the church because they're still wanting to be like the world. So they get along with somebody like that. Oh, that's all. You don't have to worry about that. That's not that important. You know? Hallelujah. I'd rather get to heaven and find out I've done way too much than get there and find out I lack one thing. Hallelujah. The Bible says don't hang around with these people. Matthew 18 and 7. Woe unto the world because of offenses. For it must needs be that offenses come. But woe to that man by whom the offenses come. The offense coming. There are tares of worldly people among the And according to the parable, you know, you don't go just ripping them out because you don't tear the weed out with them. Like I said, you see this new convert come in and start hanging around with someone that's worldly and you go, okay, it's enough because this guy's causing trouble. Kick him out of the church. What are you going to hurt the new convert to? Uh, you need, need to be a little bit more sensitive in how we do things. Jude 1 and 18 says, How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual Having not the spirit, they're acting like a brother, but they ain't got the goods. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. This is how we avoid becoming worldly. You keep your, your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. you got to keep that up. Praise God. Someone said, do you got to talk in tongues every day? Well, so you have to talk in tongues every day, but it would be good. 
you stay closer to God, hallelujah, until you break and you feel like you got in touch with God, hallelujah. One one says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some, have compassion, making a difference. It's one way we help save worldly churchgoers. Sometimes you got to have compassion and lead them in the right direction. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. You know, the old time of hellfire and brimstone preaching. Some people are just going to have to be scared into this, and some people can be brought into this by compassion. I'll be honest, I'd rather be brought in because I have a love for God than because I'm so afraid of going to hell that I don't want to step off offline. I don't want to go to hell. But I don't want that to be my main motivation. I want my motivation to be because I love God. Right. So John 21 and 15. So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. Now Jesus did this three times. The first two times he said, Feed my sheep. But the last time he said, Lambs. And that word lambs translates lambkin, which is an endearment. In other words, he was portraying to Peter just how important these sheep were to him. These are his dear ones. You hear a French person use the word shia, talking about you know children or something. That's an endearment. It means that they're special to them. They're loved. Hallelujah. Jesus was trying to let Peter know just how important it was. You know, he had died, he had resurrected, and Peter seemed like was getting discouraged and he wanted to go back to the things he was used to. I go with fishing. And a bunch of them went with him. And he said, he was basically telling Peter, don't, don't give up on this, Peter. This is too important to me. I will feed my lambs. And the last verse of scripture I'm going to use this morning, Mark 12 and 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Church, if we love God like this, you won't have to worry about being spotted by the world. Hallelujah. If we love him like we're supposed to, the world's not going to have a hold on us. Praise God. A little song says, Rose saying, This joy that I have, I didn't get it from the world. That's right. This Holy Ghost that I got, it didn't come from the world. That's right. The world didn't give it, and the world can't take it away. And I ain't let go of it. I ain't giving it up. Praise God. So stand with me this morning. And I can safely forget to take my Sunday school report. I love you, Lord. Praise God. Sister Felicia to get the vehicle going. Pray for Sister Christina. She's actually going to meet Chastity's boyfriend's mom and dad and wife that left the little early. She's having to go out to work in Nashville. But uh, we'll keep her safe on the road. Jackson, Woman travels by herself. Hallelujah. Lord, give us special protection. Travel is protected. Hallelujah. Thank you. If there's no announcements, then we're going to go ahead and pray and be dismissed in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. You have been so good to us, Lord. I thank you for all those that are here this morning, Lord. And I ask you to bless your people, your children, Lord. Bless them all spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. Bless them financially, Lord. Jesus, keep them in health, Lord. Keep your hand of protection about them, Lord. I'm asking you to protect Christina on the road and Kevin and Felisa on the road and help them get their vehicle going. Lord, I'm asking you to keep your hand about all of us and keep us safe from harm. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. We can be dismissed in Jesus' name.